All right, let's go ahead and, and, and look at Modo for the first time. Um, we're going to open the software, just kind of work it from the beginning. I might have a slightly older one than you, like 13.1 or 2, but it's going to make no difference in the greater scheme of things. Um, and so, yeah, let's let's start. Uh, to The first thing we want to do is open Modo. So we're going to go ahead and uh, gonna open Modo. All right, so this is Modo. See, it's looking, it's asking me if I want to download the latest build. It's not necessary. I mean, most of us have within reason the same thing. So most of you have this Modo intro that pops up. I'm going to ask that you guys kind of try and follow along and actually have Modo open in front of you and try and use the tools as I use them and make some of the things that I make. Uh, that will make things a little bit easier. If not, so be it. But we will have an in-class exercise that will kind of carry its way through the rest of the semester and we'll start today. And it will start with form and we'll kind of finalize with an animation around that object. But you will kind of work the same object consistently through the semester. So in the Modo intro page, you, you'll see that most things in Modo, uh, they're customizable and that's good to know. But in this case, it might you might want to have this show on startup every time so you can always see the tutorials and resources. Maybe you want to always be able to make a new scene or a new project. You'll also see down the bottom left here, there's a show this on startup selection. So if you don't want to see this every time, you can just close this and, and continue with Modo. Um, I'm going to just click new scene. And here is our first scene. Let's just have a look at what's going on here. You'll see that there's a, you might not have, how many of you don't have this list of things across the top of your screen? If you don't have it, it's because you have you need to press this star button over here. You probably look something like that. There's a little star. So you can free or unfree. So when it starts, just the things you like to work with. And you'll see after some time that you will establish the ones you prefer. And for now, I'm going to try and teach you my bad habits. And then you can kind of use them for yourself. Um, there are a number of tabs here that we can work with. For now, we're going to keep this the star button unchecked so we can look at all of them. There's a Moto tab. We can go here to quickly have a look. So Moto tab is a, is a, is a new tab that's been introdu introduced to Moto and it's got kind of half type, half topology and half modeling and some UV tools. It's probably quite powerful, but just so you guys know, I don't really work with it because I didn't, it's a very new thing that they've introduced to Moto. And so I actually predominantly will work in model in UV, in topology. So I like to go to separate tabs for each operation, and that's how I teach Moto, and I'm sure you'll find other people using it in other ways, but this is just one way to go about it. So the tab that we'll be using a lot, and um, you can you can click the little star next to it to make it highlighted so that's the one you wanna make sure you see. You're gonna make sure model is there. Um, you're gonna make sure the paint tools are there. You're going to make sure the setup tools are there. You're going to make sure the animate tools are there, the render tools. You can get rid of VR and you can get rid of Pro Render Beta. Some of you might not have this one, but the latest Moto should come with Pro Render. All right. And so you should have model, paint, setup, animate, and render. We can always add to this at a later stage. For now, we don't need that. And so I'm going to click that start thing again. And now we're going to see we only have five. And these are the five that we're going to work with consistently through Modo. Yeah? All right. We can customize this viewport a lot. And we do a lot of things to it. But for now, I'm just going to talk to you about navigation and the way it works. And then we can kind of start messing with form. So the first thing to know is that this in front of you, right here in the center, this is your, your viewport. And this is where you'll be modeling and where things will be kind of operated. This is kind of the world that you work in. On your keyboard, I'd like you guys to think about your left hand as something that rests in the same place. Generally, I keep my 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 thumb sits on the Alt button, um, and my kind of pointer finger rests on about the W. Okay, and my hands work freely in that zone, but my left hand is always there. My thumb kind of hits the space bar sometimes. My my ring finger taps the Escape key. Okay, because I'm just working in the left hand side of my 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 keyboard with my left hand. My right hand is dedicated to my mouse. So I'm moving my mouse around, right and left click, 
Um, so on. How do we pan and rotate? So right now you will find that when you start moving around in Modo, it will be a little bit confusing. There'll be a bit of strange operation. It kind of pans weirdly. It turns weirdly. It's just something you have to get used to. It's the way that it's been coded. Um, if you click and drag from a certain point on the screen, if you're holding the Alt key, you can kind of pull and push the screen in direction. If you just do it in the middle, it's very difficult to move it around in a specific location. But if you click, click the outside and pull it, it's kind of like pulling the screen around and it works pretty forgivingly that way. If you hold Alt and Shift together, you'll get the little diamond key and that's for panning, so clicking and dragging, so you can pan around. Alt alone will rotate, Alt and Shift together will pan, Alt and Control together will zoom. Right, and I'm just sliding my mouse around as I do that, and you guys can mess with that. You need to open motor, please, thank you. Can I have a look at something here just to make sure? Alt. All right, it's all the same. Okay. And then uh, for those of you with a right click and a left click, some of you may notice if you've got a mouse, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm highly recommending you to get a mouse and to install my software. Um, if you right click, and you can play with this right now, if you right click on the mouse and you kind of let go and you spin it, it will just, the thing will just kind of continue to spin in space. You can kind of drop, you know, spin the screen around. If you left click and drag, it will stop where you leave it. One of them is just for looking at objects and make it a bit more free. The other one's something different. I'll show you in a bit. Um, all right. So we've talked about how to pan around. We've talked about, about how to rotate. Everybody comfortable with that? It's really important that you guys are good with like just moving in the interface because it's going to be very irritating. All right, let's talk about some of the basic setup on the screen so you kind of know where things are. On the left-hand side of the screen, there's a series of form making and form editing tools. And so everything on the left here is to do with your tool pipeline. So when I do something, like I want to pick up a cube, I want to deform it, duplicate it, edit it, change the vertexes on it. Anything I want to do, make, is on the left. The properties of the things I've already made are generally on the right. So things I want to make on the left, or things I can make on the left, and that's just a ballpark suggestion. It may change a little bit. And everything I have already made and want to look at the properties of and edit further is on the right hand side. Let's have a look at a few more things that are really critical. So you'll see that in Moto there's loads and loads and loads of tabs, okay, lots. All these on the left hand side, these are basic forms, and you'll see that there's even there are even more forms over here that we work with. A lot of these forms that I'm clicking through right now are dedicated to different kinds of screens. So you'll see that model is here. When I click on paint, it's gone to that middle one. When I click on setup, it's gone to the next one along. When I click on animate, it completely changes the setup because I want to just animate an object. We'll get here much later. When I click on render, it changes the setup as well because it's giving you the shader tree and a few of the rendering tools. So we will get to how these different screens work. They are just recombinations of the same stuff. And what I'm trying to say is that when you're in the model tab, you can actually access all of those things. So if, if you just want to stay in model tab, if you want to stay here, you want to do your, your oopsie, I just made it render by mistake. If you want to stay here and you want to edit the, the, the materials, you can do it here. If you want to edit complex mesh operations, you can do it here. If you want to model things, you can do it here. If you want to make dynamic objects, you can do it here. There's a lot of things that can happen from the same scene, and that's just because Moto's made it all available. But if you want to keep peace of mind, I like to just go to setup and do certain things, go to animate to do certain things, and kind of move through that way. All right. Um, So in some tools, like in AutoCAD, 
when you press spacebar, I don't know if you've done this, but in AutoCAD, when you press spacebar, it picks up the tool again, right? Let's say, say you're drawing a line and you finish drawing the line, you press spacebar, it draws the line again. In Modo, it's the opposite. Spacebar drops the tool. So spacebar will kind of close an operation for you, right? Escape and spacebar are very useful things. Press escape a lot when things are going, like if it doesn't seem to be working, use the escape key quite, the escape key quite um, liberally, okay? Why do we use the escape key? So the way Moto works in terms of making things and like objects, it's pipeline based. So you click on an object and then you tell it what to do sequentially. So you'll say, I want to make a cube. I want to drag it out. I want to extend it. You know, you want to do things one at a time. Um, as that's happening, you might like make a misstep somewhere. And one thing Moto really likes is when your sequence is, is good. It will make your models better. It will make your life better. It will make all the, the setups better. And so sometimes you'll be halfway through something and you'll drop a tool or click somewhere wrong. So escape just gets you out of that tool so you don't continue to activate the tools you work. And then you can just delete the item that you've already made and start again. Okay. So just remember escape is a very powerful way as of just like kind of like if you made a mistake, like just dropping everything and kind of washing your hands and starting again. It's good to have that. Undo and redo work quite well in Modo. Um, a warning, there is a limit to the history of undos and redos, and sometimes you'll be surprised at things that Modo is willing to undo. For example, camera, camera movement inside the render window. If you think that you've made some edits to a physical model, like I've extruded a square and made it taller and done some things to it, and then you've moved the camera, render camera around a lot, if you think you can go back and undo the edits on your form, you're wrong because you first will undo all of the camera movements. Because camera is remember is thought of as an item, like an editable item. So always remember undo the camera is kind of integrated into that sometimes. And so if you've moved the camera, you're going to experience that a little bit. Let's talk about some of the components that exist inside of Modo, just so we know what's going on. on the, again, once again, just a quick reminder, left hand side, how to make and edit things, right hand side, how to look at things that exist. Okay. On the left hand side, Oh, on the right hand side, let's have a look at some of these here. These are very important just to know about. Um, for now, the ones that are really important are the items menu, the shading menu. You see these tabs over here, the item list, the shader tree. Mesh ops will get to this a little bit more advanced. It's um, uh, like kind of programmed modeling and it kind of responds to, to external stimuli um, items. This is your item list. This is critical. This is like the layers menu in Photoshop or, or Illustrator. In here is going to contain everything in your scene. So let's have a look what's inside my scene right now. If I zoom out, I'm zooming. Just have a look. I've got nothing in my scene. I've got a camera, and so I can click on the camera, and I've got a directional light. We can't see the directional light, so we can change. We can quickly show the directional light. You see this cog up here in the top right-hand corner of the screen. When we click on the cog, we get some kind of visibility options for the screen. We can, we can do a lot of, we can make a lot of kind of control here. Um, we even will edit some, some of our screen setups when we do uh, screenshots and things from here. Because instead of rendering, we might just screenshot. You should. Anyway, I'm gonna quickly activate show lights. And so when I click the show lights button, the light will show up in the scene, okay? You'll see that I have a light, I'll come to you in a second. You'll see that I have a directional light here and a camera. The directional light is just not natively turned on in the scene because we're in the modeling scene because lights are kind of more related to uh, they're related to rendering and not to modeling. But I like to sometimes see where the light is, especially if we're doing a quick setup, okay? So you can always click the cog to show the lights. Karina, come and have a look in a second. If you have a look just next to that, there's a little yellow double arrow. Some of you may not have this. Some of you may be seeing this, a four, a four quad. All right. So when you click that double arrow, it will maximize the size of the screen. If you click it again, you'll get a quad view. So we have a top view, a side view, a front view, and a, and a perspective view. All very useful when you're modeling things and trying to work out kind of where they exist in space.
Oh, it's because you're in the in the mo in the Modo tab. So mm -hmm. again, we're gonna. I'm actually gonna deselect that so we don't run that issue. And then make sure setup is activated. We do that. And so we're just gonna be in the model tab. <coughs> All right. Let's uh let's let's create an object and look at some selection tools and some very sort of basic things. The very first thing I'd like you guys to do is just create some basic shapes in the scene. And so to do that, you need to know a few basic things. First thing, on the right hand side, inside the items list, you'll see that there's a thing called a mesh. Okay, this mesh item over here is super critical. It's what we call a mesh container. It's the thing that holds the geometry that you want to design. Okay, you can't build geometry in the camera item. You can't build geometry in the directional light item. You can only build it in the mesh item. We can make new mesh items all day. You can have hundreds of them. You can have thousands of them. In fact, you can have six million of them and crash your computer if you want. To create a new mesh item, you press N on your keyboard. N for new. Okay? You're going to use it a lot, so remember it. If you already have an open mesh item, if there's an item in your in your scene that is a mesh, it's a mesh container, but it's got no geometry in it. The way to tell if nothing's on that, that mesh is if it's grayed out like this. You see how it's got no, no thickness to it? It's grayed out. It means it's got nothing inside it. If I create a new one, it will have the same characteristic. It's kind of grayed out, the same effect. Say I've zoomed out a lot. This is great to know. I've zoomed out a whole bunch. And I actually have a camera. You can see if I click on the camera, there's nothing showing. But I know it's down there somewhere. And I clicked on the light and it's somewhere. The, you need to be able to zoom back into things. So if you press A on your keyboard, just the letter A for Apple. It will go right back to the middle. Um, if you shift A, we'll do the same. We'll kind of zoom to the objects you have selected. So if I zoom all the way out and go shift A, it'll snap right back there. It's very useful. If it's, so especially in the beginning when you get lost in Moto's world, like you'll zoom and zoom and zoom and zoom and then everything will be gone. Shift A will get you right back there, okay? Or A will do the same. It'll just snap you back to the object. Very useful, very important, especially in the beginning. Because people do this, and then they right-click, and then spinning, and then, oh, it's gone. Okay, they need to be able to get back here. And it's very good at the very beginning to understand that we need to shift A just to get to the very middle of the scene. It gets things nice and proportioned. Let's talk one more thing about navigation here, then we'll, we'll, we'll start to model something. Um, if, we have a look at the, if we have a look at the bottom left-hand side of the screen, there's this little three-sided uh, diagram. An X, a Z, and a Y. Does everybody understand what that is? No. Okay. That thing is determining which direction certain axes on the screen are running. Does everybody understand X and Y axis? So on a graph, certain direction in the X, certain direction in the Y. Everybody understands that Z or Z is your is your three-dimensional axis, the one that gives it gives it height. So if we have a look here. That's what we usually think. It's X and Y on the graph and, and Z running kind of to make it higher. In Modo, and that's actually how it is normally in a lot of software. In Modo, it's not like that. Y is up, X and Z on the ground. That's just the way it's set up. Um, and if you're trying to work out where you are in space, one, always you can always have a look at the bottom left-hand corner to see if it's, if you know where you are oriented. But you can also have a look here and see there's a blue and a red line on the screen. Okay, you'll see they correlate to the blue and the red line bottom left of the screen. It'll help you orange yourself, know if you're facing the right direction. Uh, we'll talk about some of the other kind of drawing tools. You see the gray grid that kind of snaps around as I move? You see that? So that's kind of a work plane, and it moves itself determined by the direction your camera is pointing. And that's kind of also working with the three axes. We can move that work plane quite quite to kind of customizable extent. But for now, we're not going to worry about that. And you're going to work more with things like snapping to make it work. So here we have our light and our camera. We can click on items. We can also click on objects. There's a couple of different selection sets that we can we can make in Moda. And we're going to talk about those in a second. So let me, let's create an item together. Click on the empty mesh item on your, on, in your item menu. I want you then to click on the cube, the cube tool, and we're going to go few, through a few different ways of making a cube that work really nice for you. Okay. The first way to do it 
is by clicking and dragging. I'm just pulling this up here so you can see I can do that. So I have I can see some of the tools. The first way to do it is click and drag. So I'm going to press escape a lot just so that I can get complete other tools just to do it one more time. I'm going to pick up the cube primitive. It's the only container in the scene, so it's going to have it automatically selected. Or you can select it if you'd like. Cube, so I'm going to make a square. I've got my thing selected, and now I'm going to draw. First thing to think about, you see the gray, you see the gray thing that keeps snapping up and down. See it's snapping, it's kind of vertical now, and now it's kind of horizontal. Okay, when it's vertical, if I draw something, it's gonna be vertical, it's gonna kind of align to that gray plane, okay? If it's like this, it's gonna be flat. So let's have a look at what happens. When I do it, when I do it flat, because that's how I'd like it from the ground, I can click to there and pull it. So that's starting to make an object. What do we do next? So one thing Moto will do is when you pull out something in the beginning, it will give you some new handles you can grab, okay? And so when you want to grab a handle, you can just hover your mouse over it, and there's lots of different handles to grab. The green one will give it some thickness because that's on the y-axis. All right, so you can pull that up. The different faces, the blue one, the red one, you can move them individually. You can move the whole box around. So this is kind of a very manual way of making things. There's nothing wrong with it. It works really nicely. Everybody was able to do that? OK. So let's quickly talk about a few other ways to make uh, a mesh. So first things first, how do we create a new mesh? Press N on the keyboard so I make a new mesh. When I press N, you'll see my, my object becomes a, a skeleton. That doesn't mean it's gone or broken. It just means it's not on the active mesh. So if I click on the mesh again, we'll come back. Um, I'm assuming nobody else has this weird kind of yellow and blue color on their screen, right? They have a different color. So what I'm doing here, just so you guys know, you see up here it says Gooch Tone Shading. You see that up here? Right here, it says perspective and then some kind of thing. For you, it probably says what? It says default. So I go to default, so mine looks like this in default. I like to use this Gooch Tone Shading here because it reads quite nicely on the screen for you guys. Otherwise, it's just hard to see. But you can move that around as you like when you're working, okay? So these are just different viewports, uh, different view types. We'll talk about them more in, 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 uh, in depth later. Um, anything you like, I like to work with Gooch Tone, okay? So, okay, we've got a mesh. We've got a new mesh with nothing on it. Let's make a new cube on the new mesh with nothing on it. So, but there's a different way of doing this. The first way we did it was pick up the tool, click, drag, click, drag. Feels very inaccurate. You know, we're just kind of modeling freely. It's a bit like clay. Uh, maybe a bit like SketchUp in a way, but with no numbers. So what happens if we know exactly how big we want the cube to be? Okay, so we can do that here. We click on the cube tool and then the cube tool settings on the left. So let's do that. We want the size to be two. Oh, and by the way, you can put in a, a unit here. So if I want it to be two feet, I do that. Two feet, I do that. Two feet, I do that. In the position, I want it to be zero, 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 because I want it to be in the very middle of my scene. Okay? And then segments, that's something we haven't talked about yet. So, um, in, in subdivision surface modelers, I'm going to go on a bit of a tangent here for a second so you guys understand this. In subdivision surface modelers like Modo and like mesh modelers like Modo, there is um, there's kind of an assumed flexibility that surfaces can have. If you guys think about a tabletop, how many points does the surface on top of this tabletop have? This top, this top face. How many, how many, how many corners does it have? Four, right? How how flexible is this top tabletop? This thing, not very flexible, right? It doesn't bend. If I was to drop it, it would probably just act like a shingle, It'd just bounce on the ground. If you think about if you think about the the material of my shirt in the same way you think about the surface of the table, imagine the surface of the table is made out of a shirt material. What would the table be like? It would be floppy. It would be like a shirt. How many points does each 
like a piece of material. There's thousands and thousands of little connective pieces, right? They all connect together. This is made out of one solid piece. It has four points. This has 60 million points. So there's an inherent flexibility to this because it's got a lot more information to work with. So it can move and shift things. This has very little information. It's kind of rigid. It doesn't make this bad. It makes it simple. It makes a simple piece of geometry. It's not very heavy. It does exactly what it's supposed to do, but it's, it doesn't have the need to be super flexible, right? And Modo has the ability to make things like cloth. I showed you guys that the other day, right? So we can make cloth and we can make rigid objects. But the reason I'm talking about this is because when we start looking at things like segments, it's talking about a system called subdivision. So when we subdivide a surface, in the, at, at the moment, like we think about the table, the table is very simple shape, right? It's, it's one, two, three, so it's six sides to make the tabletop. How many sides to make my cube? Six. If I want to make another cube that was, say, inherently more flexible, it's not going to be automatically flexible. If we want to make it so that it was able to be flexible at some point, we could increase the number of segments. So I'm going to make this 10. 10 and 10, so you guys can see. Once I've done that, so I've set up my size, I've set up my position, I've set up my number of segments, I'm now going to press the apply button. So I press apply and we can zoom in to have a look. Does anybody notice a difference between this surface and this surface? No subdivisions or no segments, lots of segments. Okay. This is going to act a lot more like cloth. It's going to be a lot more editable. We can move each individual point. And this is going to act a lot more like a piece of wood. It can only move like six points or eight points, right? Also, you'll notice with this object, it's exactly in the middle of the scene. It's squared in the center. And that's all because when I created a new mesh and I clicked on the, the cube tool, I set those things exactly the way I wanted them to be right here. Right in the middle, exactly the specific size, specific number of segments. Does that make sense? It's quite important that you understand the, what, what, like the difference between a segmented and non-segmented or subdivided and non-subdivided surface, because they can make a big difference. The general rule of thumb with Modo is keep things super unsubdivided unless necessary. Okay, just kind of stick to that and, and work it that way. So those are two different ways of making a surface. We're going to do it one more way, just so you know. And sometimes we're just like in a rush and we need to quickly bang out a shape and do something different, okay? So just so you know, in the item menu here, if I click the eyeball, it hides whatever I'm looking at, so I don't need to see everything. That's quite useful. Um, let's do it the last way. So I made a new mesh by pressing N on my keyboard, and I'm going to make a generic shape very quickly. So what I want to be able to do is just quickly pop out a cube on the scene. I don't want to think about its size. I just want it to be like generic size. In this case, it'll be one by one by one meter because that's what Moto works with. If I press control on my keyboard, you see that those little green lines show up here around these things at the top on your objects. Control, if I click the cube, shift A right here. If I just hold control and click the cube, it will stick a generic one by one by one meter cube with no subdivision on my item in the middle of the scene. Yeah? You'd be surprised how useful that is if you're just trying to make, you know, there's no point in drawing out, putting, like going in, clicking the, the thing and putting in all the values and then like pressing apply. You can just press control, hit the thing and put a cube in the middle of your scene and kind of go from there. You'd be surprised how often we start from a cube or a sphere that will kind of bring me, maybe segue me a little bit into the form finding operation. So question. Everybody comfortable making a cube three different ways? A generic cube holding control, a custom cube clicking and dragging, and a very specific custom cube putting in the data. Yeah? So we'll turn all three of those on. And uh, you can't see all three of them because one of them is hidden. Let's quickly talk about how to... Um, how, all the different ways we can select objects, and then we'll talk about all the different ways we can edit, like move an object. So let's have a look at this quickly, folks. What are you guys struggling with? It. It's quick if you ask me. I can tell you. 
Yeah, so you want to have a new mesh selected. I press N on my keyboard to make a new mesh. Just watch my screen for a second. I'm going to press Control on my keyboard, okay? And you'll see that it turns green here. You see that green color? Click once, and it puts a, a block right there, okay? The next thing we want to do is uh, we want to look at the different kinds of selection sets that exist here. So just so you guys know, in Modo, when we select things, we can select them in a number of different ways. The first way we can select things, and this is what's going on here, is we can select things as an item. So as we click on them, they activate and they activate the whole object, and it's kind of an item-based object. It's quite hard to see, but you need to learn about this, and it's very important. You'll see at the top here it says vertex. You see up here it says vertex, edge, polygon, or poly selection. And then there's a material selection, and then there's a drop-down button. Okay, you see that? If you had a slightly bigger screen, maybe it would show a bit better. Click the drop-down button, you'll see there's parts, smooth grouping, selection set. Don't worry about those. What you need to know about is parts. You see the part button? Part. You need to know about polygon, edge, and vert. Okay? There's a shortcut to those that you must know and you must use because the rest is a waste of time. The shortcut is this. If you want to select things as objects or items, or if you want to select them as mesh containers, you press 5 on your keyboard to select an item. So when I have five, when I press 5 on my keyboard, 5, number 5, I can select an item as it is and it moves. Have a look, at my, have a look on the right-hand side. As I click on things, it moves between the item meshes, okay? That's 5. If I press 3 on my keyboard and I have an item selected, which I will have after pressing 5, I can select faces, two-face, three-face, four-face. If I double-click whilst I have face selection selected, I can select everything. So one click will select a face. One click holding shift will add a face. One click holding control will delete a face, well, deselect a face. And a double-click will select the whole thing. We'll go more into detail about selection tools because it's quite complex and we can do some pretty nice things in a bit. Um, but for now, five will allow you to select the item. Three will allow you to select a different face. Maybe I'll go to a different renderer for this. Uh, that doesn't look good either. Right. Okay. Yeah, you see, I can select a different face with number three. Number two is edges. And I'm assuming you guys understand that that will be the edges of the geometry. We can click once to select something. We can double click to select the whole thing. We can, if you double click an edge, it will select the continuous loop that exists with that edge. Okay. If you go Alt Shift A, Alt Shift A will select all or edit, select, sorry, select all. Alt Shift A, all right? That'll select everything. And if you're in the edge mode, it will only select edges. If you're in vertice mode, it will only select vertices. And then the last thing we can do is we can select uh, vertices or, or points. So we can select one single point. One point. If you double click, you get all the points. One single point. Oops. See, if you press F1 on your keyboard and you click on something, it will take you to the help center. So if you want to find out uh, what's this thing, then it will tell you, oh, that's the 3D OpenGL viewport. It's quite useful. I uh, find it myself learning a lot from this. Okay, so those are, the, those are the different selection sets. Let's go through them. What is five select? Five select items. So complete, let's call them containers of information, the whole container. Number number four, we haven't gone over it yet because it doesn't exist yet. It's a material selection and super useful. We'll use it in the shader tree. Number four selects materials and will allow you to do some pretty smart selection things. Number three, what does that select? Different faces. And how do we select all the faces on a model? We double click and we get a full selection like that. Okay. We can also talk about some other smart selection tools. If we go under the select tools, you see how there's a whole bunch of interesting commands next to connected, grow, shrink, loop, next loop, previous loop, ring. You see that? They can be very, very useful for like increasing, decreasing selection, selecting very specific things. A lot of mesh editing tools and subdivision surface modeling tools rely on your ability to select polygons intelligently. I know that sounds very daunting, but it's much easier than it sounds. 
Um, what is number two select? Edges. How do we select all the edges? We can double click. It will, it will, it will select a continuous loop of edges. Uh, how do we select all of them? Alt Shift A will give you the full selection. How do we, what do we select with number one? Vertices, points in space. So each object, so every object that exists, when I select an item with five, let's have a look at this. So I just want to show you something so I can, uh, I'm trying to prove a point. I believe most of you probably already understand this, but let me do it anyway. So when you select an item, if I go to my list over here, uh, you won't have to do this for now. We'll use some tools with this. But um, let's have a look at this. When I go to this, if I look at the statistics of my object, and you really don't have to do this, okay? I'm just trying to show you something. There are vertices, there are edges, and there are polygons. And that means that every object that you create, an item, doesn't matter if it's geometry, it will always have edges, vertices, and polygons, okay? So when you select this, if we go to number two and we select all of them, so it goes white and it's told you, okay, look, there's 12 of them in the scene and you've selected 12 of them. It really doesn't matter that you ever have to see this again, but I'm just trying to show you that every object, if I go to number one, it will tell me, okay, there's eight vertices, but I have none selected. Control shift A, or I mean alt shift A. There's eight vertices. I've also still got my eight selection turned on. So if I go back to number two, you'll see it's still selected. Number one, eight vertices, all selected. Number three, all polygons, all selected, but eight. And they're all linked together. If you delete the vertices, the shape will disappear. If you delete the edges, the shape will disappear. If you delete the faces, the shape will disappear. So they all kind of intertwine with each other. But what's important is that we can select a single vertice, a single, a single face or multiple faces, a single edge, multiple edges, and we can edit that individually, and that can start to generate form and shape on the faces. That brings me to the next point. And the next point is that subdivision is kind of this beautiful catch-22 that you have to navigate. On the one hand, we want fewer subdivisions as possible because the fewer subdivisions we have, the less information we have, and the lighter the file is, right? It's like less geometry to think about. Because you have to think about it this way. Every time I do this in Modo, my computer is being asked to calculate all eight points, all eight faces, all 12 lines. It needs to calculate their new positions in space every time. Most computers can happily do that with small geometry all day. You'll spin the computer all day. But sometimes, you know, you have thousands of these things in your screen and you need to, you know, you have to be quite smart about when you move your mouse and things like that. So what I'm trying to get at is that the more subdivisions we have, the more editing we can do. The less subdivisions we have, the less editing we can do. But the more subdivisions we have, the heavier our mesh is. The less subdivisions we have, the lighter our mesh is. Can you guys see the catch that we kind of that we have to work with? We have to try and get as many. You want to make it as editable as possible with as low a number of polygons as possible. So that just means thinking carefully as you navigate. It's not so hard. It sounds really like complex, but it's not. It's just like Less points, only create points when you need them kind of thing. We can edit individually, and so I quickly want to show you some of the basic editing tools here so you guys can see what's going on. First, I'm just going to stay in vertice mode so you guys can kind of see what's, what's happening. There are three basic move tools, and they're right here on the screen. There's a... Uh, there's a, there's a transform tool, so that's everything. I don't know why they make this. It's so that you can have all the handles in one go. I believe that shortcut is Y to pick that up. Y on your keyboard. It's why do they make this tool? I don't know. W is to move things, and it's a great tool used for everything. W. E is to rotate things. W, E. R is to scale things. W E R W E R W E R is like that. E is only rotation. Y includes rotation, scale, and movement. 
So it's just all the tools. I I just don't work with this, but you're more than welcome. It's the same thing. Yeah. I just find it a bit confusing. I just like, click the wrong thing. And the one thing is, I will, and I warn you about this right now because it's good to know, if you have a lot of geometry and you misscale, you do something that you don't mean to, sometimes it'll send your computer off on this like thinking, like it'll just make your computer spin and think for like 40 minutes and it's really irritating. So, I mean, I don't, I don't want to stop you from making cool models, like have fun in Modo, but also be careful, like don't just kind of click stupidly a lot. Like that's not a good way of working in Modo. It will kind of frustrate you more than anything. All right. So there's one thing you need to know and keep in the back of your head. When nothing is selected in Modo, whether it's an item, five, whether it's a surface, an edge or a point, okay? When nothing is selected, right now nothing selected, okay? Everything is selected. That's how Modo thinks. When you don't have anything clicked on, it thinks you want to work with everything in the scene. So for example, if I press W now, I'm on vertice mode. If I select a single a single vertice and I press W, it will snap to that vertice and I can grab the various handles. I can either grab the, the blue thing to move it and grab the red thing to keep it in the axis, the green one to keep it on that flat axis, the blue one to keep it on that axis, or I can move it individually with the arrow keys. So I can move an, an item no problem, I mean a, a vertice no problem like that. In fact, I can select two vertices and do the same and we'll kind of put the, put the handle in the middle and so we can edit them that way so we can pull those around. I can even select, check, I can select another one and we'll put them in the middle and we can edit it that way, okay? But if I drop the tool and I press W, I'm still on vertice mode and I start to move things around, the whole cube comes with me. Why does the whole cube come with me? Because it's selecting all the points, okay? If I go to edge, if I go to edge mode, number two, if I select an edge, I can rotate that edge. I can scale that edge. I can move that edge. And you can do that to anything you want. You can, anything that doesn't really scale so well are points. You can't scale a point. I can do all sorts of things with this edge, okay? If I add another edge and we do the same, I can rotate the two edges together. Also, by the way, the gray outline on the rotation tool is, is to do with your screen. And so whatever, if you grab the gray handle here, it'll rotate the item according to the, its position relative to your screen. Okay, the rest are to do with specific axes on the, on the thing. So we can move lots of different things. We can grab lots of different things at the same time and you can do your edits to those, okay? You can do all sorts of things like that. But if you deselect everything and you press W and you move it around, it will move everything. If you select all the lines, it will move the whole object. If you select all the points, it will move the whole object. If we press number three and we grab a face, again, you can move the faces just like SketchUp. So you SketchUp. You can move the faces just like SketchUp. But if you deselect everything and press W, you can move the whole object. What's going on? You have a stupid grin on your face. Tan, are you okay? Well, life is boring. Um, listen, if it's boring for you, you better be able to do this really well by end of the class. Okay, so that means that you're collecting and, and, and working with this. You're also on YouTube saying that. Um, isn't that fun? So, those are the different selection sets. Yeah. W, E, R, R is, so it's just in the line on your keyboard. So W, E, R, Y, Y is everything. T is something slightly different. I will just avoid that for now, okay? Anyway, those are the different selection sets. You just have to know how to do that. Points, everybody gets that? Points are easy to pick up. And then obviously objects. If I have no object selected, I press W. It doesn't really do anything, okay? But if I have a if I have an object select, it'll move that object for me. Um, let's have a look at. So we've we've covered the selection types of selection. We've covered the types of moving tools. Make sure I'm not missing anything.
All right, I'm going to show you two more quick things. I want to talk about snapping because that's super useful, just like how to snap objects to one another. Um, and I want to talk about action centers. This is stuff you're going to have to come back to this video and watch it again so you can understand the stuff. But everything I'm showing you now is so critical for the way you work in Moto. So just kind of come and look at it. So the first thing I want to show you is snapping. Um, snapping can work in item mode. It can work in any mode. But I'm going to work in polygon mode for now or in face mode so I can just move things around that way. Um, what I want to be able to do is I want to snap objects to other objects. Okay, and so say I want to put, I've created this cool cube, which is actually a platform, and I want to put this column exactly in the corner, and I want them to line up. There's a couple ways I can do it. I could do this, press W on my keyboard, and I could go, I could go out, and I go to my, my top view, so I see my top view here, and then I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to carefully try and move that thing, and like, that's pretty good. But you can see that there's like a misalignment here, okay? And we can we can adjust this misalignment all day long, but it's always going to be some shit. It's always going to be something like this. And there's a moment where there's diminishing returns, where you're so zoomed in that like, unless somebody really went and looked and clicked on it, they wouldn't notice. But the reason we wanted to snap is actually for geometry accuracy and sometimes for line drawing and sometimes just for the pure sake of the computer to compute. If things are slightly off from each other, it's always going to try and like work out the differences there. If things are snapped together, it understands that you're kind of treating it as one line. So we want them to be treated as one line, and so we want to get our snapping to work for us efficiently. Okay. And if you're anything like me, I have ADD, and so I need things to be aligned. Okay. And if they're not, it drives me nuts. You'll notice you learned that about me in portfolio. Um, Let's talk about how we use snapping. It's not so obvious, but snapping is over here. It's that little target button. Um, the It's a different kind of snap states. X will turn snapping on and off. X. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in model. To get model, you need to click over here on this this only button, and you need to put a star next to model, and then you need to click on the only button again. So let's quickly, sorry, I need to talk about snapping. So I need to turn on my snapping, okay? Everyone can see the snapping buttons? Right now, the snapping is going to do something random. We don't know what it's going to do. Let's talk about how to edit that. What we need to do, we need to press Alt on our keyboard. When I press Alt, you see a whole bunch of buttons change on the key on the, on the screen. Do you see that? It's kind of, it's a little overwhelming in the beginning. Everything changes. So if I press Alt, everything will change. There's some pretty nice alternative buttons here. For now, you'll see that it says Options. So click the Options button. And now you'll see the different types of snapping that exist inside of Modo. And it's all very accurate. It all works really nicely. You just have to get used to its kind of habits, and then you'll be fine. For now, we're going to look at vertex snapping. What is a vertex? A vertex is a point. So it means that objects will snap from point to point. Let's have a look at that. So when I pick up this object, it puts my my action center. And so what is the action? So let me cover an action center as well. So snapping is the way we move things from point to point or edge to edge or surface to surface. An action center is the place where the action is happening from on the object. So right now, our action center is right here in the middle. And it wants to snap to any point that it can find. So it will snap to that corner point. It will do all sorts of things. Okay. However, what happens if we if that's not really where we want to work? We want to work, you know, we want our, our snapping to happen from a corner, like, for example, one of these corners. So in the beginning, if I drop my tool again, I pick it up, W, it puts it in the very middle of my object. That's just naturally where it puts it. puts it in the middle. Okay. And if I grab it right there, if I just click and hold, I can I can move it from that middle point around, no problem. And I'm using vertex snapping. However, if I want, for example, my bottom left corner to snap to the top right left corner, how do I do that? First thing I do is I, I'll drop the tool, pick up W again. I'll click on the corner, and you see the little the white dot that shows up? It's telling me that there's a snapping point there active, okay? So I'm going to click once to put my tool there. Then I'm going to click, and this is important to notice the difference of, it's hard to, to show you, but let's have a look. 
you'll see that I can. You guys have to look on your keyboard on your own screen. Put your mouse over. You see it highlights the the cross. And if you move it differently, it will highlight the little block in the middle. You kind of just want to grab the cross and move that around. You'll just have to get used to clicking on that in a subtle way. But now you'll see that our corner is snapped exactly to the corner. Another thing that's kind of irritating is sometimes if we have lots of meshes, this this uh, skeletal mode can really drive a person mad. It's like it gets irritating, it gets really messy on the screen. So something I like to do and something I recommend you guys do as well is if you click up here on the cog, top right hand side, that cog button that we clicked on before to show the lights, you want to go to um, inactive meshes at the bottom. You see how it says inactive meshes down here? You want to say make inactive same as active. So I just click that make inactive same as active under interactive meshes. And now you'll see that my, my, my screen, everything is kind of treated the same way. We can kind of see things in a different way. Um, maybe this will be a good, a good way to explain the way snapping is operating. So one, if we press one, you'll see that there's lots and lots of points on this thing, okay? Why are there so many points on here? Because I subdivided it, right? I sliced it and I gave it a lot of segments when I created that cube. Can I move something to any one of these points with point snapping on? Yes, any one I want. Can I edit any point on that, on that surface? Yes, I can, okay? So we'll do this. So we'll grab some points. You guys already know that you can just grab points and move them. You have to think about turning snapping on and off quite carefully because sometimes the snapping is a bit crazy and it will make you like people snap it across or back onto your object. So you just want to turn snapping on and off as you work. Um, okay, I want to show you one more thing. So we know about action centers. One thing we do know is that the action center, when you have snapping turned on, it will kind of automatically move around. So you can move your snapping. Uh, you want to go there. I want it there. No, I want it here. Okay, I got it. Then I can move it. Okay. So there's that kind of click, 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 and click and drag are two different operations. Um, if we hold options again, if we click the, the snapping tool, you'll see that there's a grid snapping as well, and there's edge snapping, edge center. So we can just, I'll quickly show you, like, for example, edge. Um, edge, when I zoom in, it's now highlighting edges, and so it will go, you can put your tool anywhere along that edge. Um, it will never be accurate to a point or a corner. It will only be just somewhere on the edge. And if I click and drag, it will now be accurate just somewhere along that edge. And there's lots of powerful things that can come from that. Edge center is exactly what you think it is. It's what happens when I grab the middle of a point and I put it to the middle of a point. So that's middle of that edge to that edge. Again, great for kind of quick manipulations. Um, polygons, you'll see that. So I'm going to turn off edge center and turn on polygon, although you can have lots of these active at the same time. It's not a big deal. So here I have a polygon, right? So I'll just click my polygon once and that you know, that kind of puts my, my, my cursor there. And then when I move this, it's just going to kind of snap to that surface or it's going to snap to like this surface here. Okay, so it's looking for surface. Okay, if I change the snapping to uh, polygon center, you'll see that when I click on a polygon, it snaps it to the middle of that polygon. And then when I click and drag, um, it will put it in the middle of my other polygon when it finds it. You have to just look for the thing on the screen. I mean, you have to move your mouse around. Um, Karina, you look very confused. All I'm doing here is I'm just moving an object around, okay? And the way I'm moving it around is I'm moving it around using snapping tools. So when I press Alt on my keyboard, I can change the types of snapping. Um, when things snap to polygons, they snap to faces. When they snap to edges, they snap to lines. When they snap to an edge center, they snap to the middle of a line. When they snap to an intersection, let's talk about an intersection. So if I select intersection, you'll see that if I press W, you see how it's highlighting that point right there? So that's a point where two different meshes intersect. Very, very useful, can be very powerful for you. You can click this here, and then you can move things from that intersection to other places. All right. So basically, just you'll get comfortable with this. Just turning these on and off. I'll quickly show you grid snapping so you can see what's going on with that. That's really silly. Um, press press 5, select an item, press W to move it. And now you'll see that it's sitting on the grid. And as I move this around, it snaps that kind of grid on the screen. It can be useful if you're trying to be very specific about a size or something, if you're trying to make things symmetrical, if you're just trying to make something quite accurate very quickly. 
that's a great way to do it. Okay, so those are the different kind of snapping and selection tools. One last thing, um, sometimes uh, we'll have something selected like this, and um, we want to kind of change the way we select it. And so there's a, a tool called an action center over here. So that's the last thing I want to show you before we take a quick break. Action centers determine how the object looks how the, the kind of that handle, the, the, the move tool, the rotation tool up interacts with the object, okay? So automatic, if we press W, it kind of just sticks it in the middle. I'm gonna turn my snapping off for now. It sticks it in the middle. Um, if you do it from the origin, it will put that, that object at the very center of the scene. That can be useful if you're trying to pivot things or say you're trying to make some, some, some planetary system, you can pivot from there. If you change it to uh, local, it will put it kind of locally in that object. Locally is very useful if you have lots of cubes in a scene. Like if you have lots of cubes on the same mesh. So if we have a mesh with, a, I'll, I'll pull out a couple more here. Uh, one more. And we active mesh is that one. So if I have three objects on the scene like this, um, if I have this action center set to local, and I press R, you see all of them kind of scale individually in their own location. Okay, so it's just different ways to select objects on the scene. Sometimes it's really easy, sometimes very straightforward, other times it's really irritating. Um, the rest of these we don't really have to worry about. Screen is about the center of your screen. Um, yeah. All right, so that's a basic introduction to Modo. We created some we created some item some item containers. We've modeled things just very simply. We've added them to the scene. Of course, there's lots of other things we can add. We're gonna come back after the break and look at those. Um, and then there's lots of deformation, duplication tools, mesh editing tools. It's a very, very, very like kind of endless piece of software. So we will just have to kind of eventually get there. Alrighty.